okay hi everyone so in this video this is we are going to talk about like how to become a javascript ninja developer i got a feedback from a lot of uh, developers uh, devops people and all uh, maybe some qa and uh, people coming from different technology stack like how they can uh, really start with javascript what all the things to learn and most of this question is from the fresher like because they see these these funny on funky frameworks and they just jump to it right so that's a problem of uh, current world if you are not dealing things correctly if you are not navigating through the correct roadmap path then obviously you will get lost and you might end up learning something obviously if you just let's say you are a javascript developer and you wanted to be ninja that's your target and javascript is popular i will say like lot of things you can build in javascript and javascript has enough jobs in the market i will say the when i when i saw the stack overflow survey javascript is something which is being used everywhere and when it comes to getting a job and all these things if you know javascript i think there is uh, there are enough opportunities available either you talk about any particular framework the core understanding of javascript because some companies do Uh, do want that you know the core concepts of javascript now they can give you any framework any tool set any technology set in javascript so that is more important here so first of all like how to become ninja so here let's say you are a fresher there are three stacks we have let's say you are a fresher and you just started learning right most of the the coolest graduates what they do is they start with uh, basic javascript because this is simplified and easy for them but they get lost in the middle why because always they think that okay this is they saw the videos okay uh, learn react in 2 hours learn node js in 1 hour or learn devops uh, in 1 hour or something like this and that's the real problem we have here because we are not following any roadmap or you might see some javascript roadmap online and just follow that path that is also fine but i will say first is when you are learning javascript is first get a core hands on and in when i say core hands on is what is javascript how it works how it works with html because javascript earlier we thought it's a client side now javascript is a server side also right so you should be good at okay how javascript work at the client side on the browser how javascript work at the server side in the with the node js because in ja, in javascript we know deno js node js and these server side frameworks available to write the server side uh, systems that can be the apis or any kind of service you are building uh, which runs on server rest all the other things we are running on the browser i do talk about the react angular vue js uh, i know like there are maybe 5 6 or more than 10 different framework available view js swell js uh next js sorry next js is server side rendered but react js angular js ember js i and angular 1.x i know a lot of framework and i have worked on them so those all are like client side but you should not jump to that that's the the, the main focus is you should not jump directly to the learning a framework first you should understand how javascript really works so for that you should know how the how to deal with the dom when you are writing in html and javascript how we are doing it so even if you just write a simple to do app right uh, if i just talk about any react developer who is writing react for 2 years and when i give a problem okay can you write a simple to do app without using any framework just accessing the dom nodes creating the element like document dot get element by id document dot create element document dot add child and all these things these methods he or she is not aware right because but under the hood this is what that is happening in your whole journey when you are writing a react angular and all all are doing a dom manipulation just in a different possible way so first of all good javascript understanding is must and i maybe you can follow some tutorial some channel i'm not saying that my content is best you can just go through the mdn documentation mozilla developer network right that provides a lot of good useful information you can refer any particular book but the core understanding of javascript should be good 
like how the function behaves how now we are writing classes with the es6 and lot of things we are doing in javascript objects spread operator rest parameter i mean lot of es6 features es5 es6 es7 so there is a lot of things you must learn in javascript before even moving to any further level now what people do is they just to go through some tutorials and they start exploring maybe react because if you talk about react people talk about okay learn react in two hours three hours and they start learning react and they say that i can build a to do app in react with the and i know react this is the scary part because yes react is a framework which is doing everything for you you are not even aware what how actually uh, the components are getting compiled what jsx you are writing uh, how you are writing typescript javascript and all so once you become familiar with javascript core concepts and advanced concept i will ask you to choose one framework okay maybe you can choose react svelte js or uh, views js or angular that depends on the the market availability because what people do is if the project is in angular they are stick with angular i mean learning a framework is not a bad thing you can learn angular you can learn react you can learn views js or any framework the only possible part is learning it properly right not just like watching a particular videos and try to learn it because once you learn it your job depends on it and do not learn and do not become that stack developer okay i heard that you they used to be a mean or mern and people start calling a job opportunities for this mean mern and i don't know like how many stacks are there because these are just the names don't just confused with them that you are a mean stack or mern stack developer there is nothing like that in javascript you should be good at javascript and it can be a mean or mern or anything because what matters is just a framework change and anybody can learn if these framework over the night and then get experience over the the time so don't stick yourself to just uh, watching okay i am a mean stack developer mern stack developer because if you are a javascript developer you can do anything in javascript don't limit yourself just to react angular view js svelte js svelte kit or anything because javascript is uh, the whole lot of ocean and you are just uh, diving into it so you can start learning react now i will not just talk about n number of different things to learn but you when you are writing a react don't jump to any framework to write a styling let's say people started using tailwind uh, bootstrap and all first try to write styling by yourself or the here you are understanding dom right here also you should learn vanilla styling okay how you can write a styles currently what i see is people are just using these tailwind bootstrap and all these framework classes they don't even know right uh, how to centralize the element uh, now we have these flags uh, grid and all but under the hood right how these flags works you should know these flags box classes it's not like you just use a tailwind class obviously the end goal is to get the job done but you should know how these how the styling is really working right just like all these box model Uh, all the different kind of a layout positioning systems and all so first of all understanding the core is required and then you can choose okay i wanted to use tailwind for styling my components i wanted to choose some other thing for uh, building my component in angular react or vue js now tailwind is popular so i will just go with that because once you know the core vanilla javascripts javascript and css you have done some projects in vanilla css and javascript then you know how to use them then you can just choose any framework react angular vue js that is all client side because i don't want you just stick to a front end web developer position obviously when you are just writing or running something you will end up into one zone either a front end zone or a back end zone but it's not like you limit yourself just to okay just being a front end web developer writing components i will always say that you should explore other opportunities of writing a backend in node js because here it is a server side thing so it's not a fresher it's like a one or two to three years of experience because once you have a two to three years of experience what you know you know a couple of frameworks in the front end and you started exploring the backend part of it right javascript server side this is what you started exploring 
Now in JavaScript, there is a the whole ocean set of technologies. I mean, there are many things you can explore and learn. I won't say that you learn each and everything, but when it comes to the tool set and all, first you should learn Express. And when you learn Express and build a basic APIs, don't say that you can write a backend systems. Because when it comes to the backend, there are a lot many things you can do in the backend. But yeah, initially understanding a simple basic system exposing a REST interface is required where you are writing a different interface, get, put, post, delete, patch. And there is a client you have in a React, Angular or Vue.js consuming those APIs. Right. And then you can start exploring the TypeScript because now without TypeScript, there is nothing. So here is, okay, I got everything. Now it's time me to explore or deep dive. I mean, you don't need to learn TypeScript. You just need to use it. And when you use it, you will start becoming familiar because TypeScript is just on top of uh, JavaScript. And you don't need to learn it. TypeScript automatically, TypeScript when you write TypeScript with React, TypeScript for the Node.js. You are just writing a type definitions for objects, variables, classes, methods and all. And when you start using it, it's everywhere. Now, without TypeScript, I won't say that you should build any kind of project. In today's world, TypeScript is a must. Okay. So when you learn TypeScript, okay, then you can start exploring some kind of a framework for the backend also. Like front end, you know, HTML, CSS, then started looking for, okay, React, Angular, Vue.js, Svelte.js. And if you really wanted to explore in 2023, you must learn Svelte.js and Svelte Kit. Like there is a React Next.js for server-side rendering. Similarly, Svelte.js for the client-side app. Svelte Kit for server-side rendered application. So once you are good at this, then you start looking for the server-side framework. I mean, this is my journey in the past uh, six, seven years. This is how I learned, learned a lot. Server side framework, you can just explore Express TypeScript, if Express you already know, Nest.js, Kuwa, Happy.js, and all these different framework are out there. You can start exploring them and build the APIs. Now it's not only just you build the, the REST APIs or GraphQL APIs. You should be able to write any kind of system which, which is server side. So in server side framework, let's say we talk about Nest.js. We talk about uh, Express Kova Happy. I mean, there are many, uh, I don't remember all the names, but these are different frameworks which are available to write, to help you to write uh, the systems. And now Express is more popular and you will intend to use it. You can also explore Nest.js. I have a lot of content and I love writing APIs or systems, backend systems in Nest.js. Then coming to this, because now you started exploring the backend systems. So coming to the database side, database, I mean, uh, when you do the front end, you are not into the database side and you don't know how to deal with all those things. But now as you, you are, want to become a ninja, right? So you should be good at working with SQL and NoSQL database. I'm not saying that when you have become a developer, it's the, it's your day-to-day -day job to write the queries, write the build the APIs. Most, most probably you will either write the components in React and do the integration, or if you are a backend developer doing the queries and all, but there is no harm in learning things. When things are okay, you are writing JavaScript everywhere, either a client side or a server side, it's all JavaScript, right? So for SQL, NoSQL, Postgres, MySQL is good. For NoSQL, MongoDB, Dynamo, I mean, Dynamo is a cloud, but uh, MongoDB is simple, simplified and easy to use and learn. And then obviously a lot of other things will came into the picture, the ORMs, right? How to deal with all these database. So you will start learning the ORMs like Mongo's, uh, SQLize, type ORMs, all these ORMs came into the picture. So ORMs layer, so here you, what you do is you will learn SQLize, let's say Mongoose for no SQL database. Then there is a SQLize or type ORM for SQL database. I mean, there are many other ORMs which can help you like Prisma. Prisma is also ORM. On top of that, 
So what those ORMs are helping you to fetch the data when you write build the APIs. So these ORMs can talk to your SQL database or NoSQL database. Now I'm more into the backend side. I know how to write the APIs running that locally, how to connect to the database. And now my next part, which is there is where should I host this application? I have the, the APIs, which is running fine. I have the front end React app. I have backend services running. But if I wanted to share it and show my work somewhere, then where can I deploy it? Right? Then it's a coming. The picture is the deployment part. These are the basic roadmap. I'm not talking about advanced architecture level stuff. I'm talking about the roadmap of two to three years of two to three years of experience. And I'm talking about Ninja developer for it. So you will start exploring. Okay. Uh, where can I deploy the application? I have a front end, which is uh, client side rendered application, which I'm using the react angular client side, whatever the client side app you use, you can actually host it anywhere. So then you can start looking for the cloud option. Or you will learn how can I deploy the application? It's not like, okay, you need to learn DevOps for doing these things in service based companies. You are not even familiar how the application is getting deployed because learning the CICD is like, it's not a DevOps thing. You should be responsible for doing all these kind of things. And then you can explore, okay, how you can deploy the front end client side rendered application on the AWS Azure or somewhere else. And then how can you deploy your backend application, which requires a database, which requires some framework to run on AWS Azure or maybe on Heroku, right? So cloud options means you are buying a server. You are giving paying this amount to some service provider to host your application. So Heroku, AWS and Azure. I mean, I will say that with two to three years of experience, you should know how this, uh, what is AWS cloud, Azure cloud, how to, how to deploy your front end application, back end application. Even you can try for AWS cloud practitioner certification that gives you the whole overview of uh, how you can build and deploy application. Now I can say, okay, I'm a beginner level full stack developer because I, I can use any framework to build my client side, either a client side rendered framework, which is React, Angular or these, or I also learned the server side rendering. C, uh, SSR, which where I'm using uh, Next.js, but you should learn this only when you know how to write a backend in Node.js. Then only you will understand how actually this SSR works and how this uh, rendering is happening. Next.js, Feldkit, or any other framework which is doing a server side rendering. Okay, so these all components. This is how your journey should be not just like, okay, learning JavaScript and I started learning SwellKit. I won't get anything. I may learn how to write the syntax, but that's not going to be useful for me. Now with the cloud, uh, you know, Heroku, AWS and Azure, these are really important with the two to three years of experience. Once you know this, you, you will understand the whole picture, how to write the, the pipelines in the GitHub, GitHub actions, how to write pipeline using GitLab, CI, YML and then how to deploy the application to simple, maybe a Heroku front end app, Heroku APIs or the AWS cloud front and S3 we will use or similarly in on Azure. This is what you should be aware. And now your role can be a front end heavy or a back end heavy from this side. If your role is front end heavy, then you should be good at some of the framework which you are using in the company, writing the the reusable component managing the storybook kind of a repository for your reusable components using n number of libraries and exploring the opportunities to learn them because now you are experienced and now you are exploring more and more things in the front end if your role is more about writing the components in the swell kit swell js or react js keeping yourself updated and write as much as you can because sometimes we just keep ourselves limited to what we do in the company, just writing a component, writing test case, my job is done. No, but because in JavaScript is evol evolving day by day, if you talk about simple project and tool set, you might be using NPM, uh, Yarn or PNPM. There are like, uh, even if you talk about the package management system in JavaScript that is evolving and tool set, we are using now monorepos to the build the projects, right? 
so every time and uh, i mean a lot of things are coming into picture mono repos and uh, package managers npm yarn pnpm how we build the application is really getting changed because now we are adopting the faster framework like svelte kit which is using this wit and uh, wit uh, runner which is making your compilation which is compiling the svelte which is using this svelte js compiler and building the code very fast if you talk about you write a react a huge app then obviously the build is taking longer time with the help of webpack but now the latest tool set is doing a lot of things on top of it so you should always be updated with all those things if you learn svelte js then you will know okay this uh, new tool set you might start using mono repo for your front end application in the mono repo you will put okay these are my reusable components this is my front end app in front end i have a different sections okay this is the client side front end app this is the admin side front end app and all those things i can manage in the mono repo mono repo is not a new concept but now it is evolving and becoming popular you can use larna you can use bit you can use nx and pnp with the help of pnpm workspaces or npm workspaces so uh, learning a mono repo is now a really good thing then if you talk about just a purely front end and you are limiting yourself to a react then obviously in react there are a lot of things um, react redux obviously if you know react you know the redux redux toolkit and other state management solutions and latest react changes you should be familiar with i mean when you write a lot of things in react then you start using those things and you become familiar with that writing the test cases using react testing library writing end to end reusable components using some react storybook because now you are experienced and you know how to use the storybook how to put the usable components into a one repository and consume it throughout the different uh, organizational project right similarly um, if you are front end heavy things you can learn server side rendered framework which is next js and swell kit because that will give you more options to write a front end app not just in react you can just use next js you can not just swell js you can also use swell kit and these days learning is easy just and then getting experienced by doing it is over the time that will happen when you start using it exploring getting some errors troubleshooting that will give you some more experience now if you want to do the back end heavy responsibilities then obviously you will learn first building the rest apis okay but when you learn rest apis then you can do lot of other things also so this is where i learned building the rest apis and i can build any kind of rest api system then you will start talking about okay how can i build a graphql apis then you might explore okay these are both http protocol based backend systems i can talk about okay how can i build a grpc or trpc based system or hey how, how can i just write a lambda because lambda is also server side on node js it, it's using some cloud vendor technology but lambda is also doing the same thing what we are doing in the rest api and graphql api is that when you doing a server side or running on server it is these rest apis and graphql apis are running 24/7 but when you do it on the lambda that's like you are invoking a function and that is responding to your request so having a lambda knowledge on top of your cloud is really good thing if you have it because people also using uh these cloud technologies and writing the lambdas for their backend apis either it is a rest api graphql apis so learning lambda on aws api gateway lambda or uh, dynamo db is really add on on top of that and nsjs building a rest apis building graphql apis and you can learn more about learning grpc trpc and on top of that that if it is a backend heavy you start exploring other framework but if you are satisfied with the nsjs and express that's more than enough you can do anything in backend systems if you know these framework when you start exploring the different database different framework this is what your job is now to get more hands on on different type of services because a simple service can be expose a rest interface graphql interface can also can also listen for some kind of events coming in a system right event driven architecture different architecture pattern you start becoming familiar this is what your the the road map to become ninja if you are really a backend developer you start understanding the different database querying them and learning how to do the migration with the different database 
being good at it it's not only just learning it's all about good, being good at it and uh, using typescript everywhere this is also become help you to become ninja in javascript okay so these days the overall summary of this whole is i will just uh, so start using typescript have a good grasp on core javascript skills learn new framework but before that have a good understanding on express how the rest api works and then you can on top of that you can learn the different framework similarly have a good grasp on the basic javascript write different api just using javascript and html and then think about how it is being done through some framework react Swell, js or uh, Vue.js. how those are different the, how these framework different from one another because if you have used angular and react you know the difference how the component is being compiled there how the component is compiled and bundled here how it is being done in the Swell.js. Swell.js is doing out of the box and how it is different than because Swell.js is a compiler and doing this compilation and building the components very fast at the runtime. So you will start exploring it because when if you want to have this ninja tag uh, with your profile and then build a good set of projects, write a full stack application with these variety of uh, framework, use TypeScript, use different database and get yourself familiar with each, most of the things which are there in javascript which are popular right so using monorepo working with git is obviously very basic git gitlab and also you can learn about writing the ci cd setup so that if you are writing a front end app you know how this is getting compiled packaged and shipped it to your uh, s3 bucket or maybe if you are writing server side app how it is shipped to your lambda function and server so that it can be rendered okay uh, i will stop here and if anybody has any question then it's good or you can just uh, send me a question i thought like a lot of people were asking how to get started to get a job uh, for that i'm separately creating another playlist how to crack a job or uh, using javascript technologies like you are looking for a switch or a job in javascript domain then what all things you must know how to prepare for it because now the interview process is not that easy they give you the assignment they ask you to write a code and and that obviously that code is not that complex but how can you get ready for those i'm not going to prepare you for data structure and algorithms part but yeah I, i'm just going to put enough content so that you will get yourself confident when facing a code assignment and doing a coding interviews there okay so that's pretty much we have uh,